What's up, dorks? So you just made a wonderful model-driven app that you're excited to give to your users, but they aren't entering data the way that you expected them to. Let's guide them through your process with a business process flow. Let's go. Business process flows provide a guide for your users. Essentially, it shows a progress bar and displays what stage in a process someone's at. It also sets very clear expectations for what you expect at each stage of the way. The way it works is that it connects actual fields in your Dataverse tables to the stage. So they know these are what I expected to enter in at this point. You can run multiple business process flows at the same time. So while HR is working on something, your IT department can work on something else related to the same data. You can also scale with your data. So as your tables grow larger, you can accommodate that with, within your business process flow. So it sounds kind of vague. Why don't we get into some specifics? I just want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff related to this. We've got stuff from the Power Platform over to SharePoint. We're all about making your workplace more modern. So if you're unfamiliar with a model-driven app, you've got a little bit of homework to do. Go check out Mike's blog or his video about model-driven apps 101, and he'll guide you through the steps to create the foundation that we'll build our business process flow on top of. Once you've got that down, come back here and we'll finish the rest of this to build your really strong model-driven app. So here's my example. I'm working on an app for maintenance requests where I receive them, I need to process them. First, we're going to outline your process, get it out, get it down on paper. Step two, we're gonna create the actual business process flow. I'll show you how to do that. And then step three, we're gonna add it to your app and see what it looks like. I want you to actually write down the steps that your users need to go through and the data that you're collecting at each step of the process and just write it down. So in my example, I'm going over a maintenance request. So say I've got tenants in a building, they submit it. I need to receive that, review the maintenance request, determine a few things of who my contact is, where this request is for, and what is this request. Okay, so that's stage one. My second stage is going to be scheduling the work. I need to fix their problem. So what do I need for that? I need a vendor who's going to do it for me. And then I also need to determine when this work is scheduled. So I've got those two columns to fill in. All right, and then the final thing, I'm closing the request. I'm following up with the tenant, telling them all their stuff is good to go, and I'm ending the process. So now we're gonna come over here into our solution and see how to build this. If you've watched Mike's video, you should be familiar with what this looks like already. If not, again, go check it out. So in here, I've got a model-driven app already, and I've got a few tables that this is gonna live on, this business process flow. So let's see how to add it. It's buried a little bit, so we'll come here to New, Automation, come down to Process, and Business Process Flow. So we need to give it a name and then this will automatically populate when you click in there and decide what table this is gonna live on. So I have one where all of my maintenance requests are going to live. And we'll create it. So let's familiarize ourselves with this new user interface we've got here. If you've never seen it before, it's similar to business rules uh, and it functions in a similar way. So what we've got here is our components on the right side, which we can add to our business process flow. And then this here is kind of our canvas that we're building it on. So the two that I'm going to focus on are stage and data step for this. Stage lives at the top level of your business process flow. So mine were review maintenance request, schedule work, and then close request. So let's add three of them to my business process flow. You can do this by just dragging them on here, or you can come up to this plus arrow and click add stage and then you decide where it goes. All right, so I've got three on here now, great. I can rename these by coming here and changing the display name. I'm going to make them match what I called out in my outline. To save you some frustration, please listen to this. Every time you make a change to anything in this user interface, you must click the apply button at the bottom. 
Because if you don't and you click off of that, your changes will go away. They won't be applied. So you have to click that apply button. You'll be much more successful if you just do that. Click apply. All right. So now that we've got these all named what I expect them to be, we'll go ahead and add the steps inside of the stage. So these steps are the ones that we're looking to collect data on. What am I looking for in each of these? So I did outline these in my outline. We'll go ahead and add these the same way by dragging and dropping. So now that we've got these data steps on here, we need to point them at the proper field. So we'll go ahead and click on one, come over here and we can select a data field. So the first one I had was the tenant. We wanna know who submitted it. And we can choose to have this required or not for this stage of the process. It doesn't make it required on the table, just for the stage. So I'll go ahead and click apply and it'll save my data. I'll do this for the rest of them. Now that we have all of our data steps inside of our stages, we're gonna come up here and click save. And what this is going to do is validate that the logic inside of your business process flow is correct. So it looks like we're good to go. And now I'm going to click activate to turn on the flow. So now we know it's activated because this has changed to deactivate. All right, so now that we have this business process flow, let's add it to our model-driven app and see what it looks like. We'll go in here and edit our app. The place that this lives is over here in this automation tab. So we'll go ahead and click on that and we can see that it's not in this app. To add it, we'll go ahead and click this and click add. There you go. Now let's publish your app and go check it out. So it looks like some of my tenants have been very busy. They've submitted some requests. So this is the table that my business process flow lives on. It's my maintenance request table. Let's see if we can solve some of these problems for them. So we'll take a look at this one. Quark submitted a broken replicator. All right, so here's our business process flow at the top. It exists like a progress bar and we didn't even have to build that part. So let's see what it looks like. We'll go ahead and open this up and now we can see that Quark didn't fill in the location, but it's required. So I have to, I have to figure out what this is. I'll fill in this information and then I'm able to progress it to the next stage. Now that we've got this information entered in here, we're gonna progress it to the next stage. So now it moves on to the schedule work aspect. So we know that we need to, in this, part, pick a vendor, and decide when the work is scheduled for. So we'll go ahead and look for a vendor in here. And this is just a lookup column to my vendors table. We can interact with the actual data in our model-driven app. So we'll go ahead and pick Chief O'Brien to work on this one. And we'll fill out when this is scheduled for. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll progress it to the next stage here. So. Chief O'Brien's really speedy. He actually got to it today. So we're gonna go ahead and close this. So you can see that as I populate it, it actually fills in all of these fields on my form. So this is working directly with our model-driven app. So now I've reached out to Quark, O'Brien's completed it, and we're good to finish it. And now we get a gold check. Or it's not gold, it's green. <laughs> gold star. So now that we've completed this one, we'll go back out to our list and you can see that Benjamin Cisco has lost his orb again, but this process has not moved forward. It's because each of these is connected to an individual record. So they're specific to what I've got on my screen. So we just made a really basic business process flow, but they can do so much more. You can add branching, you can trigger power automate flows and do so many other things. I've even added one to a Canvas app. So leave me a comment and tell me what process you're excited to use this for. One more resource we have for you is our community. It's a workplace where we come together and we solve your specific problems. You can come in and ask questions and we're here to help. We'll put a link down in the description for you to check this out.